Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. I want to finish up our discussion of the square well and properties of the square well based on the properties of the Schrodinger equation by talking about the idea of expectation values. And when we get to the quantum theory of measurement, in the next chapter, the, the notion of the expectation value is going to play an important role. So some of the results I talk about here will be more general and we'll develop them as that, but I wanted to mix it between the square well and general results. So remember that the expected value for the position of a particle in the square well was given by this expression here. Sorry, we use the word average position. Now I'm changing the, note, the terminology to ex expectation value or expected value, which is pretty typical. I mean, uh, physicists have their own language for discussing these, these things, and it's mostly the same as a, a probabilist would use based on probability theory, but occasionally there's a few little wrinkles here and there. But expectation value, expected value, and average value are pretty much the same. Okay, so that's the expectation value for the position. What about the momentum? Well, it turns out that it's just going to be m times the time derivative of the expectation value of x. All right. Now, for a particle in a square well, we can characterize the expectation value for momentum in a very nice way. And this is a nice little calculation, this theorem, because it uses two things. It uses the Schrodinger equation, and it uses hermeticity, theorem 6 from earlier on. So, the result is, that we want to prove, is the expectation value of P is given by this expression. So look at this. We have psi, in, under the integral sign, we have psi bar on the left. We have minus i h bar d psi dx um, on the right. Okay, that's like the same, that's like in the um, Dirac notation, having a ket psi sorry, a bra psi on the left, an operator for p in the middle, and a ket psi on the right. And this is the integral form of that. So, if we want to prove that this expression for the square well comes from the expression above, 2.109, then we need to take the expectation value for x, which we had up here, and differentiate it, and show that we get this equation here. Okay, so I'm not going to go through it in great detail, but I just want to point out a few things. Okay, we differentiate it, and what you're going to get is what? Well, you use um, the product rule for differentiation you get x d psi bar dt and then a d psi bar d psi dt in the other side. So we we'll use the same trick we did used earlier when we derived um, the probability current. For the terms involving d psi dt, d psi bar dt, we use the Schrodinger equation and substitute in to this expression. And then what are we going to do? Well, look, this is made for integration by parts and hermeticity. Remember that V equals zero for the square well. And we go through the calculations and we end up with the expectation value for momentum as stated in the theorem. So this is a good exercise to go through. So it's useful to make a few remarks from this, okay? So 
we've looked at the expectation value of x, expectation value of momentum. I've told you about the analogy with Dirac notation and the bras and kets and the operators in between. And that's going to come up quite a bit. So as I mentioned, this proof of this use only the Schrodinger equation and theorem six, hermeticity. And it's pretty easier to generalize this to higher dimensions. So this would be the expectation value for P in general. And note that this result is consistent with treating um, h bar over i grad psi as momentum time acting on psi or momentum times psi, we think of it. So what about energy? Well, in analogy with what we've just done, For the square well, we have psi bar under the integral sign, psi bar on the left, psi on the right, and the energy operator in between. Okay? And the energy operator, remember V equals zero for psi bar. You can also write it in this form. The general form for the wave function is an expansion in terms of eigenfunctions. And if we use orthogonality, we can show that the expectation value of E can be expressed in terms of the eigenvalues and the amplitudes squared on the corresponding eigenstates. And this is a very useful and important result. It's going to come back in a lot of different ways. And so I urge you to think about these calculations and to um, uh, compare back with what we did earlier for the square well. Okay, this is going to generalize to general ha Hamiltonians where it's kinetic plus potential energy. The expectation value for the energy will be, now it's in D dimensions, you have psi bar on the left, that's our inner product structure, psi on the right, and energy operator in the middle. And this is equal to that. Okay, this is really just a first introduction to expectation values and the structure of the equation that we calculate and what, what they mean. Um, it's an it's an integral form for the abstract Dirac notation. We didn't use the term expectation value in chapter one, but we will in chapter three, and we will have a few exercises set for expectation values in this chapter. Okay, so the next big topic, which will essentially finish off this chapter, is scattering and tunneling. Tunneling is intrinsically quantum mechanical, and that's the, 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 now we're starting to get into more of the uh, really remarkable quantum properties that don't have a classical analog. Okay, that's it for now, and I'll be back next time with scattering and tunneling. Bye.